Okay, today we're going to look at fractions, decimals, and percentages and how to convert between them. Um, I've listed below the order in which we're going to do that. Please make sure you have a pen and paper handy to make notes as you go. Use the video functions to listen again and rewind so that you can make sure you fully understand. If you see a pause symbol, I am going to ask you to do a small activity, so please be prepared to do that and do it so you can test your understanding. Uh, finally, make sure you do, don't have any distractions like music or TV in the background. Try and keep 100% focused on the maths for the next 15 minutes. Starting with percentages to fractions, the most important thing you need to remember about percent is that it is always out of 100. That's what percent literally means. Okay, so if I want to convert 35% to a fraction, I am literally going to say 35 out of 100 as a fraction. That's what that this is what that fraction line really means. So it's 35 out of 100. Now make sure you check that you can if you can simplify here. They're both in the five times table. So 35 divided by five is seven. 100 divided by 5 is 20. Will often be another mark for making sure you simplify, so please do. 3% as a fraction is the same thing. 3 out of 100. 3 out of 100. Can't simplify. That's all there is to that question. And finally, 100%, uh, 120%, sorry, out of. 100. 120. It's still out of 100. I know it seems odd to have 120%, a percentage bigger than 100, but there is nothing stopping you having more than 100% in this scenario. This simplifies both of those can be divided by 20. So it is 6 over 5. I'm going to leave that as an improper fraction. If you are asked for a mixed number, then you might have to instead write it as one and one fifth for an extra mark. Changing percentage to decimals, again, make sure you remember percentage means out of 100. All you have to do for converting 35% to a decimal is do 35 divided by 100, 0.3. Five. That's all there is to it. Take your percentage, divide it by 100, get an answer. 3 divided by 100, 0 0.03. And 120 divided by 100, 1 1.2. Notice I haven't put the zero on the end of there. There's no need for the zero there, it is just 1.2. Here are a few questions I want you to fill out the table. So for the first one, I would literally just write 0 0.37. Make sure you simplify for the fractions. Um, give it a go now, and when you unpause it, the answers will pop up. Okay, here are our answers. Um, be really careful, particularly here. I see a lot of people who want to write 0 0.8. It is not. Divide by 100. That 8 moves from the units all the way to the hundredths column. Make sure you simplify, okay? If you can, you must because there's normally a mark for that, okay? So here, for example, they're both in the four times table, I divided by four. These are both in the two times table, so I divided by two. This one, this one you should know. This is one that you should always be able to recite off the top of your head without having to do any maths at all. Okay, moving on to decimals. Converting decimals to percentages. Now, I said in the previous that moving from a percentage to a decimal, we t divide by 100. Well, to move, for example, 0.35 back to a percentage, we're going to go backwards and we're going to times because 100 times in by 100 is the inverse, the opposite of dividing by 100. So 0.35 times 100. 35%. Similarly, 0 0.6 times 100, 60%. Be really careful that you don't just write 6%. A lot of people are tempted to make that mistake. And finally, 0 0.03 times 100, 
is 3%. If I want 0 0.03 as a fraction, I have included the table on the right there just as a, a reminder. This is what I do in my head whenever I try and do this. So if I take 0 0.03 and write it into my table, I have 0 tenths, I have 3 one hundredths. If you literally say that, I have 3 hundredths, I have 3 hundredths. That's all there is to it. So for this one, 0 0.6, I have 6 tenths. I have 6 tenths. Remember what I said before though, check for, fa uh, for simplification here. Everything can be divided by 2 to give you 3 fifths. This one, 0.35. Now this takes a little extra thinking, but not a great deal more. The last column I've used is the hundredths. Okay, I've put the 5 in the hundredths column. So I have 3 tenths and 5 hundredths. What I really have is if I'm using my hundredths column, I have 35 of them. Okay, so the last column I used was the hundredths, and then I just write backwards from 5, 3, and so on. It should still look very much the same as the number I wrote down, it's just moved. Okay, have a quick go again, um, and pause it while you do. When you unpause it, the answers will pop up. Okay, here are the answers for you. The first one was straightforward, just times by 100 to get 53%. I'll put the 53 over 100 because it is 3 was in the hundredths column, so I'm using hundredths. 0.3 is 30% and 3 tenths. Be careful because they often get muddled. Same with 7% and 7 over 100. The last one is 150 over 100, which is 3 tenths. Now, I've not, it doesn't look like I've used the same system there, but I did really. If you just think for a second about what 150% is as a fraction, well, it's 150 over 100, so it's got to be that. If I use my table for a moment, I had 1.5. I had a 5 in the tenths column, so I'm going to use my tenths, and then I'm going to start backwards from 5 again. So I've got 5 and 1. 15 over 10, which is the same as 150 over 100, is also the same if you divide both of those by 5 as 3 over 2. Right, fractions to decimals. There are lots of different ways to do this. I'm going to go through two. The first one is a nice way to do it, but it gets trickier later on. So if I take 7 tenths and want to write it as a decimal, if I have 7 tenths, in my tenths column, I will write 7. I'm going to put a naught for my units just because otherwise I'm writing 0.7 and that's not really okay. Okay, so it's 0 0.7 and that is a straightforward, dead quick way to think about that. Uh, if, By the way, if you want this table, you can just sketch one out, but if you want to just do it in your head for the easier ones, that's okay too. It's up to you, whatever works to help you get it right. Now the problem is that this question is over 20. I need it to be over tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, so on. So I'm going to do a quick conversion and multiply top and bottom by 5, which will give me 35 over 100. Now it's hundredths. I'm going to start in my hundredths column, and I'm going to have five hundredths. I'm going to have three tenths and no units, 0.35. This is where it gets trickier. I need one eighth over, well, it's definitely not going to go into tenths, so hundreds ideally. Problem is, uh, eight times 12 is 96, eight times 13 is 104, eights don't go into 100 exactly. So I need to know how many eights there are in 100. I have to do a quick bus stop. 8 into 1 goes 0, carry the 1. 8 into 10 go 1, carry a 2. 8 into 20 go 2, carry a 4. 
I had to put a decimal in there to help me out. 8 into 40 go 5. 12.5. So 8 times 12.5 gives me 100. And 1 times 12.5 gives me 12.5. You can't have a decimal in a fraction. So now, in addition to all that, I've now got to times by 10. As times in by 10 will get rid of my decimal and leave me with 125 over a thousand. I finally got a fraction I can use here. So in the thousandths column this time, starting backwards from five, five, two, one, and a zero for my units. All of that to find out it is 0 0.125. Now you can probably see for the first two, it was quite reasonable to use this method, but that last one, well, there's a lot going on there. It's a bit of work, to be honest, there's a lot of opportunities for it to go wrong. I personally don't like to use this for the more tricky questions. So instead, I'm gonna do it differently because you can also do it using division. One eighth, Remember the fraction line is also the equivalent of a divide line, so it's really the same as saying 1 divided by 8. Well, I can use a bus stop to work out what that is. Be really careful. This is going to feel completely counterintuitive because most people are used to the big number being inside the bus stop, but 1 divided by 8 has a 1 in the bus stop and an 8 outside. It's how many 8s in 1? Now, we know 8s aren't going to go into 1, so I'm going to put in a point zero 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 for now to help me out, because I'm going to need them. 8s into 1 doesn't go. Carry the 1, put in my decimal point. 8s into 10 go 1, remainder 2. 8s into 20 go 2. 2 times 8 is 16, so those are 4 left over. 8s into 40 go 5. 0.125. Now, as long as you remember to have your bus stop the right way around, that I think you'll agree is much quicker than all of the stuff I had to do on the previous example. If I do another one here for you, 5 twelfths is really 5 divided by 12. Bus stop, remember, big number on the outside, little number on the inside. I'll put in some decimal points now because I'm going to need them. 12s into 5 doesn't go, so carry a 5, put a decimal point in. 12s into 50 goes 4, remainder 2. 12s into 20 go 1, remainder 8. 12s into 80, well 12 times 6 is 72, so it goes 6 times, remainder 8. 12s into 80 again goes 6 times, remainder 8. 12s into 80 again, 6 times remainder 8, and you'll probably guess, worked out by now, that's going to be a recurring decimal. So, we can just write that it is 0 0.416 recurring. Now, if it doesn't ask you to, don't round it, but if it, for example, said to two decimal places, then it is 0 0.42 to two decimal places. But only round it if it asks you to. Fractions to percentages, to be honest, I just don't do them. Instead, I convert all my fractions to decimals and then to percentages because decimal to percentages isn't too tricky. So, for example, I just proved that 1 over 8 is the same in a decimal as 0.125. Well, 0.125 times 100 to make it in a percent percentage, 12.5 percent. Five twelfths is a percentage. Well, we just proved that five over twelve is 0 0.416 recurring. 0 0.416 recurring times 100 is 41.6 recurring cents. Do not drop that recurring off or it's not technically true. Okay, keep it in there unless it's asking you to round it. Okay, here you go. Have a quick go at these. The last one is tricky. It's going to require that different method. 
Okay, if you've had a go now, you should have got these answers. Um, like I said, you you ought to know that one off the top of your head. Okay, it's a really common one. Be really careful with uh, here, not getting 80% or 0 0.8, and 3 tenths is 0 0.3, not 0 0.03 or anything like that. Just, just be really careful about mixing that up. Um, the final one, I would have done a bus stop and done how many eights go into seven. And if you do that with your decimal points, you should get 0.875, which you can then times 100 to get 87.5%. Now, you are not likely to get just, please convert this number into a fraction or a decimal. Okay, what you're likely to get is something like this question in a GCSE, where you are given three different types of number and ask them to put them in order. First things first, make sure you know what order they want. Don't do it biggest to smallest when it's asking for smallest to biggest. If you want to have a go without any clues, start now. If you need a little help, the problem you've got here is that you have got a percentage, a decimal, and a fraction. You can't compare them unless they are all the same, and it is not a good idea to try and compare fractions. It goes wrong more often than it should. Instead, convert them all into percentages or decimals. I'm going to get all of mine into percentages. So 0 0.7 as a percentage, and what is 16 over 25 as a percentage. Okay, so pause it now convert them, see how you get on. Okay, if you paused it, you should have managed to find out. I've gone, uh, done this by converting them all into percentages. I've got 65%, 0 0.7 is 70%, and 16 times uh, 16 over 25, sorry, um, I need to times by 4, which is 64%. Okay, so Put them now. So if you've managed to get two out of three of those, you would have got the first mark. Now you have to get them in the correct order, starting with the smallest. So the smallest was 16 over 25. The next biggest was 65%. And the, finally, the biggest one is the 0 0.7. You don't have to convert them back into the original types of number normally. You can leave it in whatever common version you found but I like to put it back as it was originally. Okay, now you've had a go at all these. If you need to go back, do so. Otherwise, have a go at the worksheet. Let me know if you need any help.